In this tutorial, we are going to talk about animation in SimLab Composer, and also create some animation samples for a wheel support assembly. Let's take a look at the assembly parts of this design. It has a base assembly and a support assembly that contains the multiple sub-assemblies in it. There are also four bolts within the main assembly. Click on Animation to access the timeline. The timeline is a graph that stores keyframes for every animation you create. It has simple buttons to control playing the animation and also control the keyframes. You can copy and move keyframes or delete them. To create an animation for the nut from frame 0 to frame 20, move the timeline slider to frame 20. Select the nut and modify the object's position and rotation. I will pull it outwards a bit and rotate it counterclockwise to simulate loosening a nut. Set the slider to frame 0 and play the animation to see it. Move the slider to frame 30 and move the nut further away from the assembly. As you can see, SimLab Composer automatically creates keyframes once it detects any change in an object's attribute and records that change in a keyframe. Let's animate the bolts washer now. Select the washer and move it in the same direction as the nut. Notice that SimLab Composer, aside from creating a keyframe for the animation, it also creates a keyframe for the object's initial state and places that keyframe on frame 0 in the timeline. Transforming the object's attributes from the initial state to the state you create is the basic concept of animation. If you play the animation, you can see that the nut and the washer's animation overlaps, which is not what we are looking for. And this simply happened because the washer started moving outwards before the nut. To fix that, move the washer's initial state frame from frame 0 to a frame higher than 20, which is the frame at which the nut starts moving outward. Animate the bolt in the same fashion. Set the timeline's frame to 30 and change the position of the bolt. It started moving before the bolt is loosened, which doesn't make sense, so we change the bolt's initial frame position in the timeline. Same goes for the wheel. Change the position of the wheel and make sure it starts moving after the bolt is removed. Now that we have created an animation for breaking the parts of this model, let's create an animation for assembling those parts. The idea is simple. What we need to do is reverse the animation we have created. To do so, select the nut's keyframe at frame 20 and click on Copy and Move Selected Keyframes. Select the frame from where you want the copied keyframe to be placed at. In this case, set it to 40 and click OK. Select the initial state keyframe placed at frame 0, copy it, and move it to frame 60. What this means is that the object's attributes, position, rotation, etc., at frame 20 and frame 40 are the same, and at frame 0 and frame 60 are also the same. Let's reverse the animation for the remaining objects.
play the animation. And as you can see, all the objects behave as intended for them. The move from the initial state to the new position and back again to the initial state. The problem is, the animation is intersecting, and the objects are going through each other. To fix that, we need to create an idle state in between the animations, to prevent the objects from going back to their original position while the other objects are still in the first animation cycle. Let's move the frames for the second animation cycle farther in the timeline. Then select the last keyframe in the first animation cycle. Press Ctrl and C on your keyboard to copy it, and move it a few frames to the right. Do the same for all the objects. What this has created is an interval of time where the objects are idle and holding in position before entering the second cycle of animation. All that is left to fix is the timing for the second cycle, so that the object's animation paths won't overlap. Let's create an animation for the bolts, holding the wheel assembly to the base. Click on one of the brown bolts and move it upwards. Notice how the other bolts are moving along with it. Rotating the bolt would also affect the other bolts, and that is because those bolts are instances and not separate objects. Instancing creates a new object but keeps its attribute linked to the original. So whatever changes are applied to the original object, they will affect the instances linked to it. To create an instance of an object, go to Scene Building, and under the Object tab, click Instance. Make sure the highest level of the assembly is selected before instancing and not the geometry itself to create a proper link. Delete the new bolt and let's go back to the timeline. Set the timeline slider to frame 105. Rotate the bolts and pull them outwards. Move the initial state frame for the bolt from frame 0 to frame 100. Move the timeline slider to the right and pull the bolts upwards again. To move the remaining parts, select the main assembly containing all the parts and move it, instead of moving the parts one by one, which could be time consuming. Select the main assembly named Support and move it vertically.
Let's create an idle state for this animation. Select the last keyframe in the cycle, copy it, and move it. We are almost at the end of the available keyframes in the animation timeline. To increase the maximum number of frames in your animation, simply increase the number in this box. I will set it to 200 for now. Let's create a reverse animation. Select the initial state keyframe, copy it, and then place it at the end of the animation cycle. Select the main assembly in your scene and rotate it. If you click play, you will see a combination of all the animations we have created along with the turnaround animation. What we want to do is to have this animation but still maintain the previous one without the model rotating. I will extend the maximum number of frames in the timeline to 350. Then select the first and last keyframe in the main assembly animation and move them to a blank area in the timeline. Now I have an assembly rotation animation and still have the previous animation separated from it. I will now select all the keyframes, except for the main assembly's keyframes, and press Ctrl and C on my keyboard to duplicate them. After that, I will select all the duplicated keyframes and move them to the area where I have my turnaround animation. A different helpful tool we have is animating the camera. Go to the Camera tab and select Capture. This will record the camera's location and view and save it in a keyframe in the timeline. Move the timeline slider and change the view of your camera, then click Capture again. This is a very helpful way to focus on certain points of your animation. In this tutorial, we will not need a camera animation, so I'll just delete the camera's animation. Go to Share and click on PDF Settings. Select a template and click Edit. What we will do is create a 3D PDF file for our models and be able to play the animation in this file. Click on Text to create a button. I will name it Wheel Exploding.
With the text selected, go to the Properties panel to the left and change the type for the text from None to Animation Play. Change it to Animation Range to set the range of frames to play when the button is pressed. Set it to play from frame 0 to frame 40, which is the range in the timeline for the wheel assembly braking animation. Press Ctrl and C, and then Ctrl and V on your keyboard to duplicate the text. Double click the text to edit it and name it Wheel Assembly. Set the range for this button from 44 to 96. Create a text and set the range for each animation accordingly for the remaining animations that you created in SimLab Composer. Save the template. Click Refresh in the Template tab to update the template's gallery. Select the template you edited and click Save. Click on Export PDF, name the file and click Save. SimLab Composer's animation is very simple to use, yet very powerful. It can play a vital role in empowering the presentation of your design and guarantees you a better visualization of your product.